Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are joining us from. We are here with George Bardisi, who is the CEO and founder of Bevoid. Perfectly clear. Yeah. Hey, George, how's your day going today? Uh, you know what? I'm still uh, trying to catch up on some sleep from being in D.C. for DattoCon over the last few days. I somehow bumped my head into something in the middle of the night, you know, and I don't know what. <laughs> so uh, Did that yeah, happen after been, the party? The after no, party? No, I, when I got back from the party, oh, I, okay. I got home and I'm like, what, how did I hit my head? I don't know. So uh, anyway, but it was good. It was a good time. That was a great party, by the way. It's the first time we uh, uh, we were able to rent out uh, the entire Washington Nationals ballpark, Major League Baseball Stadium, to throw uh, almost 1,500 people were at that, with that, at that what we call MSP community block party. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I hate that I missed it. As I told you earlier, I uh, had every intention of going to DattoCon this year. And, well, time just kind of crept up on me. And then all of a sudden, it was here in like a week or two. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's already happening? So yeah. Maybe next year we'll catch it. And, uh, we'll have, next we'll, year they have announced yep. it. Write it down in your book, guys. It's going to be in Miami the first week of October. Awesome. That's going to be fun down in Miami. Might have to rent the Marlins baseball stadium. Who knows? There you go. There you go. Since we already have one underneath the belt, you know, we can try for another one. So what was the best part to you, in your opinion, of DattoCon this year? What was your favorite part? I think the best part of every event is networking uh, yeah. with pe real people who, like, actually are in the trenches and, like, know what the day-to-day -day feels like. You know, everything else is cool. And, yes, you can learn some other stuff. But, like, that's by far the best part of any event, in my opinion. Uh, you take that off the shelf. Uh, I'm a big Gary Vaynerchuk, or we call him Gary V. Yeah, uh, Gary fan. V. Um, second time I've heard him. I was, he was at the IT by Design event, not this year, last year. And then he was at DataCon. So those are the two times I've seen him in person. But dude just speaks my language, you know? He's from, he's from New York. I'm from Philly. So I kind of put that off to the side and, you know, just hear the guy out. And, you know, he's a smart dude. Smart yep. dude. You know, I kind of have a very similar story, right? Immigrated into, you know, his family immigrated into the country and, you know, his parents were, you know, called fresh off the boat and <laughs> uh, had to learn and figure it out and like scrape and claw. And, you know, I, I, I feel that story. I do. So um, it was good. It was good advice. He had some pretty good, good stuff. Um, actually recorded the session. So if you really, you guys should probably, you know, no, no publicity here. Right, just go check it out. He gave some really good advice on what you should be doing today in your business. There you uh, go. Marketing. And he also talked about like what he's concerned about, which is not just the great recession. It's the great, I never even applied. Um, you know, because, you know, all these, the younger generation can find alternative means of making money on, you know, everywhere else, YouTube, selling stuff online, Instagram, and, you know, his favorite TikTok, once you get over the China thing. <laughs> so awesome. it was, uh, it was good. I really enjoyed that. I mean, and obviously I know a lot of people came to DattoCon to, really figure out where the future goes for that, you know, now with the Kaseya Dado story together and, um, you know, hear it from, you know, the proverbial horse's mouth. And they had Fred out there just trying to paint, you know, the, what should be the future, uh, you know, and then make a decision of whether they believe that, that that's the future that's going to come true. So, you know, that was probably the big thing that I think a lot of people went there for, uh, whether they got their answers or not to be determined. But, yeah, it was uh, it was definitely – uh, three years in the making and like to like to see the the community come together it's really rare to get those you know we you know last time we saw big events right i mean we're talking 20 you know late 2019 early 2020 right so this was uh one of the bigger ones that uh finally has come back to life and uh yeah it was good to see everyone so let's talk about events would you say that dado con is up there in the as one of the top the top events for msps to go to in the channel for the year i mean yeah, I, I do believe so. Uh, has been historically. Um, I don't, you know, I was definitely not, that has, this year had not changed my mind, you know, saying otherwise. So I'd say DattoCon's probably in the top five. Um, you know, you have IT Nation that's been a staple out there yeah. uh, for a long that's time. A you have um, uh, Enable has a conference every year. I think they finally just bring it back this year. Um I know Kaseya's own conference, right? If you were on that side, right? So those are the big four, right? Uh, I know that there's smaller ones, right? Like um, 
the exchange events are very popular, but they're small, right? 200, 250 people. Um, and How about then, the event know, coming up in Chicago here? Yeah. So uh, I like actually like this one. So uh, my friend pa Paco LeBron uh, okay. and his business partner threw an event out in Chicago called um, TechCon Unplugged. So okay. You can Google that TechCon Unplugged. So it's in Chicago. It's actually on a weekend, right? Where most conferences oh. are, like you said, Scott, you had you're in the middle of doing things. You 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 know had business to conduct and you couldn't make DatoCon. So this starts actually um, <laughs> Friday tomorrow night, tomorrow evening, and then goes Saturday and then kind of cuts out on Sunday. Um, so I actually like the weekend angle on it. It's in Chicago. It's still nice out, right? It's not winter yeah. time, thankfully. So I'll be uh, I'll be there uh, tomorrow evening, and then uh, the next one right after that is going to be um, if you're even if you're not involved in a peer group, right? Taylor Business Groups uh, runs an event called the Big Big Conference. Uh, uh -huh. It's definitely not the same size as Datacom by any means. <laughs> uh, it's actually at the last uh, site of Autotask Community Live, okay, uh, which is at the Diplomat Beach Resort in Fort Lauderdale, which is pretty nice. So. Um, so I'll be at that one. And then, um, yeah, I mean, like, listen, there's a laundry list of other events right after it. I mean, this is a time yeah. where like literally, you know, you're only home for a few days a week kind of thing. Well, I've got another event that everybody needs to mark their calendars. Okay, here we it'll go. It'll be, it'll be the first, the first IT business owners group member cruise. So we're looking, we're shooting right now for November, 2023. It'll be a land and sea event because okay. a lot of people had said that, oh, no, with COVID, I don't want to get on a cruise. And we're okay I, with I that. Hear those people. Some I hear. people do want to go and some people are okay with a cruise. So we're going to make it a two part event. You can do both land and sea or you can pick one. There you go. So, so you're going to, so like your more traditional, like, you know, on the ground hotel kind of setup. That's right. And then, and then when you're ready to go on your, you know, workation, that's it. You jump on the boat. Absolutely. I think it'll be fun for everybody. Absolutely. And uh, it's something different for the industry. So, yeah, I mean, I it's been a long time since somebody has done something uh, on a cruise. Yep. Very long time. So absolutely. Well, uh, it's definitely worth it worthwhile, I think. With COVID, I was trying to pull it off since 2000, late 2019 for, we had planned it in 2019, but then the, the actual event was going to take place in 2020. So COVID just kind of squished all of our plans, but we've kind of went back to the drawing board and we're going to have a, a, a way better event. Uh, it'll all be worth the wait. So that sounds great. I can't, I'm, I'll probably be there then. Well, speaking of sounding great, I understand we're going to talk about five things that Bevoy currently gives its customers that are not available with other VoIP providers. Yeah. So, hey, listen, um, making the phone ring uh, is pretty easy, right? I think a lot of people and companies offer that, and yeah. it's been happening for, for a long, long time. Before I was born, I think, you know, the phone on the wall was rang. So, um, you know, we always like to build uh, value for our partners, and hopefully they're in customers. Um, we build, you know, a couple hundred new features a year uh, and you're like, well, phone's been ringing for decades. What's new about it? Well, it's not just about making the phone ring. It's the stuff that happens around that. So, you know, but wait a minute, uh, decades ago, you took a tin can and had a string in the middle. So I mean, that's true. But Alexander <laughs> Graham Bell, man, he came way before me and you, I promise. I gotcha. I mean, just saying. So I wanted to highlight five features that. Okay we're giving away that a lot of other phone systems don't even have, uh, or if they do, it comes at an additional cost. We kind of just give them away. And that's okay. going to lead into, um, at the end, in a couple of weeks, we're doing a quick virtual, hey, here's what we've been doing for the last year called event called Launchpad, uh, where we kind of say, hey, we've done a lot of things. Here are the things that you know are kind of cool factor that you should know. And like, we constantly are evolving that and building new things. And that's what's kind of exciting, right? Um, it's not just, you know, the, not everything's created equal, right? And not every platform is the same. And we like to like, you know, get into the lab and, you know, tinker a little bit. That's right. So, that's right. So let me, well, that let is me, exciting. Let, yeah. So let me show you and explain to you five features that we give away at our base plan 
no extra fees, just included. Maybe you're like, eh, it's boring. Maybe you're like, oh, that's cool. But like, we continue to try and like not, you know, obviously everybody has options, right? There's more than one plan to choose from. And sure. the more features you get, the higher that goes. We try not to nickel and dime people, right? I don't want to charge you for every, you know, checkbox that you turn on. Sure. Uh, so let me just uh, quickly go through this. I think, you know, it'll be interesting. And again, I kind of borrowed this from our launch pad event coming up. So uh, you'll uh, you'll get to see it. So okay. uh, outbound caller ID, Scott, right? Like you're like, all right, what's so, so you know interesting about that? Well, you know, there's reasons why you would want to change your outbound caller ID. Let's say you have different business units, right? Let's say you have break, fix, AV, and managed services, right? Let's okay. say you want to be able to call out so that when they call back, they get to the right people, they hear the right messaging, rather than you just sending the same number out all the time. And then they, you know, they, you know, they call back and it's not, you know, they're confused who they're talking to. So a lot of the times that's not an option that you can just change on the fly. Yeah, you can block your caller ID, but you can't change it easily from a phone system standpoint. So what we allow you to do, and this is now going to be included in every BVOI base plan and above no extra fee. You can create a list for your users, right? Of okay. all of the numbers that you want them to be able to change their outbound caller ID to. And in a simple drop down in their, you know, uh, UI of their interface, their phone system interface, they're going to be able to just change their caller ID on the fly, right? Very so nice. you're going to be able to just say, hey, I'm calling from Domino's Pizza. I'm calling from George's Shoe Repair Shop. And then I'm calling from the computer store, right? So like go crazy, right? Obviously you would want these numbers to be numbers that people can call you back on, right? So sure. that you're not spoofing people. Although sometimes calling from the Domino's pizza place down the street might be funny. Uh, you definitely <laughs> want to make sure that, you know, probably from, from, you rather want these people to be able to get back to you. So yes, you can predefine what numbers are available for your users to change and then give them the option to just change it on the fly. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, I think that's very nice, very important, uh, especially if you're if you have different departments where you want to make sure that the customer is not confused who they're talking to. So especially yeah. if like you also are somebody that's kind of tucked in the back office, right? Yeah. We're like you're like, hey, I'm calling you back. I just want to deliver you this piece of information. Please call back to our ser service line to talk to somebody if you need more help. And then that way you're you know, the number that they call back is like going to go to more people maybe than just you versus your direct dial. There's a lot of permutations, a lot of scenarios, but this is pretty flexible, right? They don't have to do anything special. They don't have to log into any different place. They don't have to type any special key code on their dial pad. Like this just a drop down. Very nice and simple. Very simple. Very simple. All right. So now we got that one under the way. How about custom statuses? So every phone system has a handful of statuses, right? I'm busy. I'm available, I'm away, uh, do not disturb, right? But like, they're not maybe good enough, right? Maybe okay. you're in the middle of an emergency. Maybe you're on vacation. Maybe you're, in this case, on site at a client. I'm not gonna be available to just answer your phone call on the fly, stuff like this. This is meant for more of an internal, um, you know, status board for your own organization, right? Ah, uh, just okay, because, I get know, it. So, so that way... <clears throat> excuse me, it could be kind of like the virtual in-out board, but like with more context, right? Hey, I'm in the middle of taking, a, you know, a, a, an online course or test, you know, so now you know that that person's deep, deep into something in a client meeting, could be anything, right? Training. So uh, the status the name is not meant to be really long. It doesn't need a full big explanation, Correct. just a short, brief summary of where that, why that person can't take your call. Correct. And then what happens is, when you create that status and you can map it to the, the normal phone system, you know, kind of routing, right? Hey, if I'm do not disturb, it sends a call to voicemail. You know, if okay. I'm out of the office, it maybe forwards to the person that's backing me up while I'm out. Of, you know, you know, you can map it to what the phone system is supposed to do. So, like, are you logged into or out of call queues? Yes or no? Or, you know, what's your phone system status so that, you know, you, it'll normally route calls the way that you would, you know, generally speaking. So, Okay. You know, if you so in this case, I said, "Hey, on site at a client, my phone system status will then be set to do not disturb." And then do not disturb goes to a message that says, "Hey, I'm not I'm not in the office right now. You can either leave me a message or press this button, and then it'll take you back so you can talk to a live person if you need to." Right? So, like, this is an example of where custom statuses could be super helpful. Yeah, very nice. So not to. Not too shabby, right? So, and how many statuses can you set and determine as a template? As many as you want. Okay. 
no limit. Nice. Yep. So this one, again, <laughs> um, I can't tell you how many times, right? Um, people forget to do this last minute and then they call frantically because they don't remember how to do it. They can't find the, you know, what the instructions are to go and add a holiday into the phone system. Why, why would you do that, right? Maybe uh, the 4th of July weekend, like the Friday is a normal business day. And so your phone system would be configured to take active calls, live calls versus you being closed, right? Because you're routing sure. calls usually differently when you're in hours versus out hours, right? That makes sense. So when you create a holiday in the phone system, it usually reacts either as a closed day, right? Or you can even include a custom greeting, right? And a lot of systems, right? Hey, thanks for calling George's IT. It's Christmas. Happy holidays. We're cool <laughs> today. Call back, you know, after New Year's. Yeah, okay. don't you wish, right? Yeah, after so, New Year's. You mean call back the next day? <laughs> Took off for a week. Don't call me until 2020. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so we've created a holiday importer tool. Nice. Which allows you to predefine, like you may imagine you do this in the beginning of the year, right? You go to your customer and say, Hey, what are all the days that you're off this year so that they don't call you last minute as an emergency call because they forgot to put the system, you know, on closed, right? And you can import all of those holidays into their system and then it's automatically done for you. Very nice. I mean, this Just is a, this check is a, a box. Twofold, this is a twofold thing, right? You do this as part of like kind of your, hey, I'm thinking ahead for you, Mr. Customer, as I'm meeting with you, kind of talking about what's coming up. And then also it's a, if you if you open this up to your end customer, it's a, hey, Mr. Customer, you don't have to jump through all these hoops. Just go log into the system, check the box, press OK. And then that's now marked as a closed day kind of thing. Uh, okay. But I can't tell you how many times our partners call and say, man, this is just the biggest headache because they always call during the holiday when, you know, like I, I'm paying, you know, either, you know, begging somebody to be on call or paying time and a half or whatever it is just to answer a silliness question, which is you forgot to actually, you know, tell the system it's Christmas. There you go. And you can, with this new importer tool you've got, just put a check mark next to the holidays you want to take off. And then the phone system will say, Hey, that's a closed day versus an open day. And then, you know, that way your phone system doesn't sound like it's supposed to be taking calls which I'm sure has happened many times, right? Just rings and rings and rings. And the customer's like, oh, I guess nobody's there. Well, let's check them all. That, I'm going to check them that. all for you. And then you <laughs> yeah. can take all these holidays. There is a lot of holidays. Let's be <laughs> fair. We, we, we have internationalized this as we have partners out of the U.S. But okay. oh, let, let's face it, right? You would think the customer would know that on like Christmas Day, you're closed. Or New Year's Day, you're closed. Most but people are. What happened to we're always here for you, right? 24 by <laughs> 7, call any time. <laughs> Except for Christmas. Hey, so, Santa, Santa, I don't know. I, fix, your, fix your computer problem. I may take Cinco de Mayo off this year. I don't okay. Know. All right. You don't <laughs> like, uh, I was going to say, what about tax day? You're not going to take uh, tax day off? Maybe. Maybe because okay. I paid my dues and paid all my taxes. So, you know, yeah. go ahead and take the day off because of that too. Yeah. Why not? Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So Sounds like a plan. One, so the next one is. And this one's like, you're, you're thinking this is kind of funny, right? I can't tell you how many times a question about, well, how does call recording laws work depending on where I am? Every state's different, by the way. You should Google it because some states are single party. Some states are both parties have to know the calls being recorded. But in some states, it requires you to play a beep. So if you're recording a call, it requires you to play a beep. But there's a duality to this feature, right? Yes, you can do that. You can also pre-program this app to play something at the beginning or during the call. So I can't tell you, Scott, how many times somebody's called in and said, hey, I don't want to rely on my human being making outbound calls to let the end person on the other side answering the call know that the call is being recorded, right? So you could literally program the system that any outbound call, for example, a little file is played at the beginning of the call saying, hey, this... You know, this calls from so-and-so company, this call is being recorded for quality purposes, and then the person starts talking. Yep. So you can use this tool in like a lot of different ways, but effectively it's a way to automate messaging be at the beginning or during a call, whether it's for compliance purposes, whether it's you need the recording beep, whether it's uh, you want to standardize certain things that are on the call for depending on you or your end customer, this kind of tool is set to do exactly that. Nice. 
like imagine, you know, like maybe I order from Domino's again. You know, I'm going to bring them up. And like, imagine if I'm calling somebody, let them know that their pizza is sitting there. When I call out, it's like, hey, this calls from Domino's. Did you know we have specials on our website? Please check www.coupons.com you know, for your yeah. special today. And then Free I start talking. You know what I mean? Could be a lot of different ways for this one. So okay. I thought that was cool. And like that is, did I have one more? No, my one more is those are five features we're giving away. And like this is actually part, we were announcing these at our Launchpad event, ne uh, not next week, but the week after, okay. very last week of September. So if you go to this URL, offers.bboy.com slash launchpad2022, you will get to this landing page <clears throat> and you can sign up. We'll send you a calendar invite. We're going to talk about a bunch of new enhancements, integrations, features, stuff like that. One new one that we're about to launch, and I'm going to give you another, you know, kind of snippet, is we're about to announce an integration with MSP bots. Okay. If, you've heard, if you haven't heard of MSP bots, they've done a lot of cool automation and integration with a bunch of different people, now including us. So, like, we've always had integrations and have, have enhanced them recently to things like Bright Gauge or Power BI and stuff like that to be able to okay. take data out of our system and be able to create your own dashboards and widgets and like things to update you on what's happening in the moment, mesh them with your ticketing system, stuff like that. So MSP bots uh, now has integration where they take data out of VVoIP and allows and has pre-created uh, like dashboards and widgets so that you can see things like on a wallboard style, you know, format, right? And so okay. you can see how many unanswered calls there were that day or, you know, who's who's in your leaderboard, who's taking the most calls that day, who's making the most calls that day. You know, how, how many calls you take versus ticket entries did you make today? Stuff like that. So uh, we'll be actually announcing this shortly, uh, our integration with MSP bots. Uh, so I'm kind of giving you another little tidbit there, including the four or five things that we just said. Hey, we, we give away, right? We don't charge extra. You could be on the lowest possible plan from BVoIP and you get these features kind of thing. So awesome. definitely come out to offers at bboy.com slash launchpad2022. <laughs> You're going to hear from me. Uh, it's not going to be super, you know, it's not going to be an all day thing, maybe an hour or two. We're going to go through our top features from the last 12 months. I think we've launched a little over 200 of them uh, and give you a little bit of a roadmap on what comes out uh, in, in the next little while. But uh, yeah, we just thought, hey, you know, what are the things that people don't even realize that, you know, they could use? Here's a handful of them. Uh, you literally get them included with every B-Boy subscription. Very nice. Well, we I'm happy to say that we have been B-Boy partners now for what, George, going on two years now, maybe three? We oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I remember when you called and you're like, hey, I need something different and I need it fast. And I was like, no problem. Let's help you hook it up. And then like, you know, yep. so you've only needed a couple little things over, you know, since you turned it on and like, hey, good support is hard to find these days, but not a B-Boy. Because That's right. Us right away. It's awesome support. Yeah, your staff's always been uh, on target 100%. Oh, I appreciate so, uh, that because, like, no offense, but I was just on Reddit today because, you know, that's where people go to complain. <laughs> and, uh, Is that the it, platform now of choice for complainers? It should just be complaints.com. Anyway, so this guy's like, what's going on with vendors these days? I can't get an email reply. I can't get a call back. I can't, like, nobody answers the phone. And I'm like, I don't know what vendors you're calling because, like, we answer our phone. Like, because we sell that technology, I think, like, we should be able to answer the calls too. And so, like, I suggest that people do call. Like, if you need support, if I need support, I want to call. I actually might want to talk to somebody. Like, the chat may be too long for me and annoying. And, like, I don't want to wait for an email reply. Maybe I have an urgent issue. Just pick up the phone and call. So, like, you know, I find that very intriguing that on complaints.com today, you know, they were complaining how people can't get a reply back from vendors, which usually on that site is I don't ever want to hear from them. It's very it's very interesting. Post. Yeah. You know, and, and it's funny when you're talking about it, um, you know, I, I I look at, you know, vendors as doing a good job on things and staying in their lane and, you know, I don't know, just offer great support. But especially when you're talking about the uh, the style of support. You know, like you guys are always there. You answer your phone. But so many times when you call, we're, we're sorry, all of our representatives are currently helping other customers. Please leave your name and number. And then it takes it takes them forever to call you back or you're sitting there waiting. Did they really get it? I mean, sometimes you just want to pick up the phone and talk to somebody. Well, one feature, since we're talking about that, 
is that call, you know, like instead of leaving a message, it's the, hey, do you not want to wait in line? Leave us your number. And when it's your turn, you get the call back and you're on with the person, right? Like I would rather do that than just leave a message and say, hope that they got it. Yep. Now, How much support do you think is chat versus a traditional telephone support? Because I think you and I talked about this before in a previous live stream, but sometimes when I call people, I feel like my problem can be solved so much faster if I could just tell somebody what I'm going through versus to type it all out on a text or a chat. Well, I think the problem with text and chat, although they're popular for quick things, is that you can't explain context a lot of the times when you're typing with people, right? Yeah. It's one of the reasons why people, even with email, get themselves in trouble because what they were typing versus the way it may come across to someone may not be the way that you intended it to be kind of, you know, perceived, right? Whereas in a call, like I'm having a conversation with you. If I'm, if I'm angry, you're going to know I'm angry, right? If I'm, you know, if I'm like, annoyed but i'm willing to figure out what needs to be done to get the job done you're gonna be able to tell that right there's context that you just don't get in chat and sms but at the end of the day i still think that if you talk to most it and managed services providers from their perspective still taking about half of the service-based you know contact with their customer via phone and then the other half is a combination of ticketing portals chat email uh that kind of stuff right so um, it's, you know, still very, I mean, there's still about half. I know some people are like, no, I don't answer the phone call at all. They have to submit the ticket and then I'll call them back. Okay. I hope you call them back shortly because if somebody wants to get a hold of you, I would think that they wouldn't want to be able to pick up the phone and talk to somebody. But I guess the argument could be made for there's certain companies where, you know, can you call Google when you're having a problem with Gmail? Nope. You know, that's, about, that's a valid about, point. Hold on, Scott, you do a lot on Facebook. Is there a Facebook support number? Nah, and I've needed that number so many times, George. Oh my goodness! I mean, there should be. <laughs> there should there should but be. But you're right. Support number, especially if you're paying them, right? If they're they're getting ad revenue and stuff from you, I would think that they should they would, should want to make sure that your credit card keeps charging, right? But yep. I don't know. I mean, to 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 think that you know, I know some people have tried it, right? No phone, only electronic. I think there's a glass ceiling. I don't think that that that's going to work for everyone. Yep. No. And certain things, I think uh, certain, um, well, I say things, but certain companies I think can get away with it where others can't. Yeah. The people who are not charging you, it's a freemium service, right? Yep. It's like, Hey, you know, like, you know, your Gmail, we don't charge you for it. So like, if you got a problem, you can wait. Yep. And they're unless really tough to get in touch with. Oh, unless my you're a business customer. And then if you're paying us, maybe we'll take your phone call. Yep. That's I true. just can't imagine a successful channel vendor not being able to, to deliver good support. And I would think that that would include phone support. Yep. Very good. But hey, I digress. So <laughs> short and simple. I didn't even take a lot of your time. But hey, those five features are pretty cool, huh? They are, and there's every every VoIP provider should be offering those five features, and you I, do. They don't. The VoIP offers it, so they don't. They don't. I mean, that's five features of like two hundred plus, right? That we keep on every year. We keep on building them, but it's like they're practical things that have nothing to do with making the phone ring, right? They're outside of that, you know, kind of just hey, you know, do I have good call quality? Yeah. Well, those 200 things, George, I think, are one of the reasons that makes BVoIP so successful because you started it and you were in the I, you you were an IT business owner yourself before. So I think you built BVoIP out of the trials and tribulations and struggles in your own company, right? It it's true because I guess nobody spent the time and thought that these things like could be progressed forward, right? They're just like, hey, True. once somebody's figured it out, right? Like there's no reason to go down that road. And I'm like, what's figured it out? Like the lack of integration, you know, before I started BVoIP was just ridiculous. That's like, right. And I just said, something has to be different here. Like it shouldn't have to be this way. So you know, at the end of the day, we keep on taking feedback, you know, from our partner community who are, you know, and we have a features request board, just like a lot of other companies, although we actually read them. You know, I hate the guys who have a feature request board and then like 10 years later, nothing's been done. 
That's not yeah, good. That's frustrating. That's things go to die, right? That's not. Well, I have doing. a roadmap if you're not going to actively work on it. So yeah, so like we we get feature requests all the time. We're like, oh, that's pretty good, you know. And then like we actually do them. So that's the fun part of of actually being on this side of the of the table, right? The yeah. the vendor side versus MSP side. Like we get because we're not dealing with the cranky end users, you know, that create a lot of fires for sometimes no reason. Uh, we get time to actually like tinker and build stuff. Like so, it's kind of cool in that way. Awesome. Well, you are doing a great job. Keep up the good work at Be VoIP. And um, anything else you want to tell us? How can, if somebody is interested, actually an IT business owner or anyone is interested in signing up for Be VoIP and yeah. becoming a Be VoIP partner, how can they yeah. do that? What's the best way? Call us. <laughs> Call you because you you'll you pick can... up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll actually answer your call. Uh, so if you go to bevoip.com slash okay. contact, right? You have all of our phone numbers. And you can, there is a little form there if you want us to call you and you don't have time to be in an active call at the moment. There is like a form on there. If you want to, if you're interested in becoming a partner, you can fill that out. But ultimately at the end of the day, like, you know, there's a little chat tool too, you know, yeah, we have it. You know, at the end of the day, we like to talk to people, right? And like figure out what your situation is, where you're at in the world and if we can help you. And like, to be honest with you, sometimes we can't. And we'll just tell you that up front. I don't want to burn your time if, yep. you know, we're not a good fit. Most of the time we can help, but Sometimes people are in a situation where, you know, they're a little stuck and sometimes they got to ride it out. You know, like when was the last time, Scott, you heard somebody signed a seven year phone contract? They have those. Oh, yeah. hundred oh, percent. Wow. I wouldn't recommend anybody sign those, but they're out there. So like sometimes people are stuck in things like that. Right. But channel, you know, because we're channel friendly and we're channel only. We don't sell to the, you know, direct to the street. We only work through partners right okay it's very easy to do business with us right because no minimums no long-term contracts 30-day opt-out for any you know for any reason we obviously we want to know if we can be better but you're not handcuffing you to a term so you know very, very easy nice. to do business with us keeps it very fluid right if your end customer for whatever reason disappears or you know you guys split up and it doesn't work no problem right turn the juice off and so you know because you're not getting money on the other side um, so yeah, we can, we can help you internally. We can help you with your end customers, no pressures. And like, you know, you don't have to keep, you don't have to keep to the minimum, right. To still be a partner, um, which is kind of like no pressure. Right. Um, I know there are a lot of programs out there where it's like, Hey, Ron's gold, silver. If you don't sell, you know, $1,999 and 99 cents, you're not a partner anymore. We're going to shut you up. No, um, it's not that way. It's a lot easier. So. Well, there's been no pressure that I can tell. So it's it's been great when I since I've been with Bevoy. Well, Happy I did it. Wish I would have done it sooner. So I don't know, but well, let's keep let's keep things working, and we're happy yep. to help in any. If we can help for any reason, don't re hesitate to reach out. You know, I'm very active on all the channels, so just look me up, George Bardisi. Otherwise, you know, hit us up online, bevoip.com. Otherwise, we're going to see you hopefully at uh, the IT Bog. Uh, land Member cruise. and cruise event yeah. otherwise we're on the road a lot so we hope you got we run into you you know along the way and we still run these channel strong tour events and you know these msp community block parties and uh, we love those right because like it's a chance to uh it's a chance to like you know kind of you know do things up i will leave you on one last note if you're going to okay. be in orlando you know that week of no you know november 9th is a wednesday that's the last big msp community block party that we're throwing for the year Okay. We are bringing in the All American Rejects for a private concert for them. What? Oh, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That that's uh that's definitely up there, George. So yeah, I good. don't think anyone's ever done that one. Nope. That's so great. Here, if you want to join us, by the way, you don't have to be going to a conference to join us. If you're in the area, definitely come in. If you Just want to go to by. Orlando for a few days and stop by, feel free to. Uh, go to mspinitiative.com, and okay. then you'll see under community block parties, uh, you know, you'll see Orlando, and then, like, register, and we'd love to have you there. I, I I, would say, if I had to guess, it'll be bigger than the Datocon one that we just did at the ballpark. We had an wow. almost 1,500. I'm shooting for 2,000. Great. Well, I'm sure you'll get it. Awesome. Well, George, thank you so much for your time today, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. You got it. Take it easy, Scott. We'll see you. Chat later next time. Bye-bye.